Thank you so much for joining us. A couple months ago, we had the privilege of speaking with mold illness expert, Dr. Lauren Tessier of Vermont. Um, right before we recorded our live um, areas in Vermont were struck with massive uh, flooding that caused some monumental damage to houses and businesses throughout the state. Uh, one of those people was Dr. Tessier. Dr. Tessier had to evacuate her office um, as well as deal was damage to her property. So we invited Dr. Tessier back to share her story and help others to navigate the aftermath um, after such terrifying events. So she... Yay! Hello. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, can you hear me okay? Yeah, oh, yes. Thank you so much for rushing back joining us i'm i appreciate you being flexible being a couple of minutes late i apologize for, it's funny because it was phone calls with fema and the the sba and business loans and yeah it's you know it's the the paperwork monster after floods and i know everyone's going through it right now not just me other businesses other homeowners things like that yeah how are you very good very good we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about this um I know this might bring up bad memories, but I think a lot of people need to hear from you and also figure out how to actually like deal with it because it's like it, it it's a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to be here. Happy to talk about it. Thank you. So, for those who may not be aware, like what or forgotten about the news, could you t give us like you know a brief reminder to the flood situation in Vermont this past summer? Sure. So uh, we had historic rains that happened starting on July. I think it started right around the 4th of July, continued through the 7th. And then um, locally in my area on July 10th, our rivers crested. And when that happened, um, just historical flooding uh, took place. And I think folks, uh, when they think about, you know, one inch or two inches of rain, they just think, you know, what's what's around them but the reality is in vermont we're surrounded by mountains so everything hits the surface of the mountains <laughs> it goes down into the valleys so you know what might be only an, an inch or two of rain just adds up in the um down in the valleys so um there were i think gosh it's starting up as seven i think it might be up to 10 now i'm not clear uh but total counties in vermont who are impacted by this um, and so, uh, where I worked in Waterbury, very ironic name <laughs> in Waterbury, B-U-R-Y, not B-E-R-R-Y, um, they were hit. And so when that happened, I unfortunately lost my office, uh, the water filled the basement and then proceeded, um, to just cause really severe air contamination. Um, I wasn't able to enter my office space without essentially having asthmatic attack and I'm not an asthmatic. So there's severe respiratory distress, had to wear a respirator um, and more or less just had to move all of my stuff out. But in the process of moving everything out, um, there was a bit of like a, a oh moment where <laughs> I, I realized that the, the type of clients I have, since I serve people who are suffering from mold exposure and water damage building exposure, um, they they can't in good conscience be exposed to this stuff. You know, there might be a handful of salvageable things, but other than that, everything non-porous, everything that wasn't some like hard glass plastic or metal um, is, is a loss, you know, so... Um, that happened, uh, and so my business is kind of working, working out of home now, <laughs> um, and trying to figure out what's next. But you know, um, it wasn't just me; it was communities. Montpelier was, you know, severely underwater, um, and everyone is slowly starting to, I think, wake up to the realities of mold. Um, in the beginning, I was really trying hard to scream it from the rooftops um and, and unfortunately there is some bureaucratic pushback about mold no one wants to scare people with regards to mold because they don't want cities and towns to lose 
property value, which just, I mean, <laughs> if you're worried about losing property value, you also need to worry about the people who live and work in your community who are going to become so ill that they're not going to be able to function, you know? So um, it's not just from a process of loss for myself, but, um, you know, just the the trauma of essentially telling people like, I'm here to help, let me help, let me help, let me help. And essentially going behind closed doors and coming out and maybe later, you're like, well, now's the time, you know? So um, it's been a really um, frustrating and disheartening process since then. Um, and I, I'm worried for people. You know, I'm trying my best, but you can, you can only bring a horse to water, you know? And unfortunately that horse is blocking tons of people on the other side who, who need this information. So, yeah. Yeah. We've seen a lot of like a uh, rise um, in environmental disasters in over the, you know, past couple of years. Like why mm -hmm. do you think, believe this keeps happening? Yeah. Um, you know, I, there are a lot, lot of um, a lot of evidence about shifting weather patterns. You know, um, there's this really great YouTuber that I follow uh, called Ryan Hall, <laughs> um, and it's YouTube shows Ryan Hall, y'all. And I love weather. I love following weather. I think it's really interesting. And um, during that time in July, I guess what was happening was that the jet stream was just like tearing open over Chicago and then it would carry all the rain east. Um, so, you know, we're having severe shifting weather patterns um, along that. We're also having um, not just the climate shifting, but also shifting of our poles a little bit. I don't know if anyone's ever actually looked, but you can see the migration of like the pole, the magnetic pole kind of shift around. So. You know, I, I think we're in a situation where there's a lot of earth changes um, and no pun intended. It's, you know, it's the perfect storm of climate change, global changes. Um, and then I think there's also the epic component of, um, you know, uh, building, building safety um, and quality of building and building materials that are also leading to an increase in mold after these disasters, too. How fast after a flood happens, you know, can mold start to grow? Yeah, and they, they say um, within 24 to 48 hours of water exposure, if you don't have it dried out, mold can start to grow. And there was a study that came out was either in 2016 or 17 that showed that um, our drywall, because that whole process uses paper, like paper making to put that on each side of the drywall, um, that paper just comes automatically... Uh, uh, I injected, inoculated, inoculated with mold spores. And some of the more dangerous ones, Stachyboitris and um, uh, Chaketomium. And how they demonstrated this was they went to um, a factory where uh, drywall was being produced. They cut out little pieces. They put them in Petri dishes, put sterile water on the Petri dishes, and it grew these molds. And so you know, we're in a situation where um, if you give mold a chance, you just add water. We already have the ingredients there. So unfortunately, 24 to 48 hours. Oh, wow. What are some signs that mold is growing in your home or office? Yeah. Um, so maybe we'll break it into kind of two realms. We'll have the um, physical building perspective and the human health perspective. So from the building perspective, um, you know, any signs that you're smelling mustiness, like mm -hmm. consider it any bubbling paint, warping paint, um, warped floors, bubbling floors, any kind of staining or shadowing. Um, another kicker is any type of like drywall that seems kind of soft, you know, seems yeah. damp, like almost spongy. Uh, exactly. Yep. And, um, Another one that might surprise people is when you can see nails, let me see if I can do this right. If you can see nails kind of pushing through the drywall a little, so you almost see them raised up through the spackling, that's another sign that there's a little bit of moisture pushing those nails back and out. Um, big temperature drops too could be a sign. Uh, 
typically when you ever have a, a cold spot near a warm spot that can act as a condensation surface and so mold could grow there um something being cold by nature doesn't necessarily mean that mold is growing it's kind of like it could um let's see what else what else could be a good sign or a bad thing um bathrooms you're thinking of like rocking um toilets on the bottom um poor seals uh, uh creaking under tiling is another big one tiling should be very solid. <laughs> hard solid yeah. yeah so any type of creaking under tile is is of a concern um obviously any like uh staining or darkening of any like caulking um around sinks um and then if you see it like that's the other thing <laughs> if you see it you know if you see it so that's kind of from the visual perspective. And I'm sure there are, if you, people work with someone who's um, trained to test for homes, they'll have a lot more other suggestions of what to look for. Um, but from the human health perspective, which I'm more qualified to speak about, the first thing that people might realize is this like curiosity. So this timing of, you know, I go into work at Monday at 9 a.m. by 10 a.m. I feel like I have low blood sugar and I feel heady and dizzy. You know, um, and it continues throughout the day. You get headachy, you get fatigued, you get home. You might feel a little bit better when you get home, or alternatively, you don't feel better until the weekend comes. You feel a little better on Saturday morning. Sunday, you feel back to yourself. Monday, you go back into the fire and you feel crappy after, excuse my language, after like an hour or two hours. So there's definitely this timing and this periosity of symptoms and symptoms are going to vary from person to person. They can be kind of more allergenic. So dry eyes, itchy eyes, cough, sore throat, post nasal drip, itchy ears, um, cough, skin issues. Absolutely. But then there's also this kind of toxic impact, uh, where we see hormonal disruption, um, fatigue, uh, dizziness, headache, uh, brain fog. Brain fog and fatigue are typically the two biggest symptoms that I see in clients. Um, and then after that, hormonal disruption and immune system disruption. Mm. Wow. There's there's a lot. Yes. There's, there's too much. There's too much, honestly. We all need a break from mold, without a doubt. Yeah. A lot of people don't expect, you know, this type of traumatic event to happen to them. Do you mind, like, take us through your thought process as you were taking all the scene? Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I, if people really want to dig into it, I have it saved in my stories from right when the river crested. I was taking video of just like, oh my gosh, it's happening. You can see how panicked I am with the picture. But I came home that day, um, and I made a post and. It essentially said, stay away from cresting rivers. Uh, put all your important stuff up high. Take pictures of everything if you can. Um, and that's before I knew how bad it was going to get. Um, that night, we had water in the house. And I was just vacuuming up water nonstop. Um, and I threw out my back. <laughs> Couldn't walk for like five days. Oh, no. But um, it was bad. But here's the thing. Um I hit a point where we got all of our stuff out of the house that night um, and we we put other things under tarps outside um, and there was this just moment of sheer defeat, I think I might cross this through this out loud, um, where I just had to stop. I had to stop because it was like I couldn't do anything. Like I couldn't, I, it just had, it just had to happen. And water is like my worst fear. Um, I want to, I want to live in a safe home, you know, um, just like any self. So, um, it, it was really challenging. And when I decided that we couldn't fight it anymore, I came upstairs and it was probably like nine or 10 o'clock at night. And I was sat on my phone looking at all the pictures of everyone around Vermont. I was just like, crying hysterically because I knew what was coming for everyone and um yeah it, it's it's upsetting it's really upsetting so I'm sure you can imagine why I'm so frustrated when you know local bureaucracy is getting in the way of me 
trying to um trying to share information with people but yeah there there is just this moment where you just had to surrender to it and it was here and it was so different than the mold and water challenges i've had in the past the mold challenges i've had in the past have been insidious it's been the roof deck freezing and thawing and then water dripping down into the studs and then slowly molding out behind a wall that has happened i've never had a water intrusion before i've never had just full out inches and inches of water and um what i didn't realize about the flood process because everyone goes all mold all mold when you when you have water carry everything from the surface of the ground into your home you're carrying bacteria, fungi, sure, um, protozoa, mm -hmm. animal dropping, dead animals. You know, um, the you're you're depending if it's coming from a deeper flooded area. Thankfully, we were mostly groundwater, so we were getting kind of the runoff under the house and up and in, versus people who were having the banks overflowing. Mm -hmm. You know, all those folks had uh, petrol chemicals from the cars and. Um, I, I never realized just how toxic flood waters are. You know, you think, I think mold because that's, you know, everything's a, a nail when you have a jammer. And then it was like, oh my gosh, like yeah. the level of toxicity and infectious agents that's just kicking around. And then, you know, I, I live in a community that has um, big socioeconomic status. Um, and I would say also like mixed, um, education levels too and i i think that's fine there's nothing wrong with that but there were families who were allowing their children to play in the flood water in waist deep flood water across from a gas station and i just remember seeing folks on facebook saying oh these people are so stupid how could they let their kids do that and i'm like what was that like <laughs> i didn't realize the rest yeah like you can't blame them. Like, I, this is just like, you, you can't, you know? So, um, yeah, it was just, it was so surprising. And I think the biggest surprise is when I've spoken to people who are also supposedly um, there to help other folks and to be of service, they are afraid of the liability of speaking up about about these homes being improperly maintained or cared for, improperly addressed. And that has also been a gut punch because these people are my peers. I expected better, you know? And I don't know, maybe I have no filter when it comes to these kind of stuff. I don't know, but you know, I, I really, just because you provide people information about how, how dangerous mold and water damage is, I don't understand, like, it's our responsibility. It's not, it shouldn't be a liability. People yeah. can take what they need from the information you provide. I can give disclaimers up and down everywhere, you know, but I, I'm just really saddened by my peer circle who are afraid of giving people information. And that's, I don't know, I think that's actually potentially burned a bridge for me with some of my peers, so. Um, yeah, didn't mean to get a little too far here, but you know, it's, it's real. And then it's not just us, it's Florida, you know, it's, um, it's so, it's so many different places, you know, and then if it's, it's water damage after severe fires, you know, it's, it's anyone, anyone who has just a giant amount of water come into their space is going to be navigating something very similar to this, you know? If someone gets like damage from like a flood, like mold or other things, so is that something insurance would cover? Mm -hmm. So insurance, um, flood insurance will cover it, but flood insurance is typically not covered um, in anyone's normal business insurance or homeowner's insurance. Mm -hmm. So if you really want to get covered, you need to get flood insurance. And I believe if you're located in a floodplain, you have to go through this national um, clearinghouse that is specifically for flood insurance. It's, 
it's outrageously expensive. Like people can't afford flood insurance, you know, um, regular insurance, regular homeowners insurance, um, doesn't necessarily cover rising water, but they cover falling water. And so, um, it depends on how the damage occurred. So if you had windblown rain, where you had water getting blown in around your window frames, potentially covered. If you had water come up through your foundation, not covered. <laughs> so um, obviously everyone has to check with their own insurance policy to get clear about that. Um, but as a follow-up to that, people do have the option to have what they call a mold rider in insurance. It's in a mold rider is an additional kind of little um, bit of coverage eased out per mold. And often times that mold coverage isn't to cover all of your lost items due to mold or all of the construction issues due to mold or the tear out or the remediation. What the mold writer typically covers is them hanging the plastic and putting up containment to address the water damage space. So, you know, usually a mold writer, I think is only going to cover anywhere from like Five thousand to twenty thousand dollars at most, um, and I've seen homes the entire value of a home be uh, recouped in a remediation. You know, like hundreds of thousands of dollars. I've also seen a remediation done for ten thousand bucks. You know, so um, the other thing that I want to point out about the mold riders for folks is insurance will try to get out of it. They will tr try to say, when did the water happen? And when did you call us? You allowed that water to stand. That's your liability. You know, that 24 to 48 hours, that's not meant to scare you. That's also meant to, like, get you off your butt so that way you can go and report these things. It does happen. It does grow in that window. But knowing that information also allows you to act appropriately to call the insurance company and talk to them about it, you know? So act immediately. Act immediately because what insurance expects you to do is to mitigate all risk to the damaged property moving forward. Um, and, and if you fail to do that, or if you fail to prevent it from getting worse, um, there's the potential for these things to not be covered. Wow. It's almost like you don't even have time to process your in initial shock and sadness. Like you literally got to just like go, go, go and go. start acting on it. Yeah. Yep. And... I'm lucky because I'm someone who knows all this. Like, you know, um, one of my neighbors, uh, I, I noticed that she was spending a lot of time outside. And uh, I noticed an ambulance come up a few days later. And I went and, you know, nosy, friendly neighbor check, checked a few days after that. And she had developed fatigue and dizziness. She's in her 80s. She's elderly. Um, and I asked her if there was any potential for mold or water damage in the house. And, of course, she had a finished basement. Finished basements are notorious for growing mold, whether you have a water intrusion or not. Ambient humidity in a finished basement means trouble. But she had water intrusion and carpet and she was having a really hard time breathing, you know, and thankfully they came and tore it out. But, you know, I, I don't, I don't know what's happened beyond that. Um, but yeah, it's, um, people, there's still some people that are, that have wet things in their home that are still trying to get around to clearing it out. And meanwhile, what's happened is it's just slowly worsened over time. And, you know, there's a lot of, um, commercial buildings like the building that I was in the, the elevator shaft communicates directly with the basement where all the water collected um, and because there's so many uh, buildings with damaged elevators mm -hmm. there's a backlog of scheduling for correcting um, these elevator shafts so until elevators are getting addressed which is three to six months people just have an open shaft connecting the basement air with with all of the living circles with all the uh the you know and so what happens is we have a natural stack effect also known as like the chimney effect where 
air gets driven from down up high, you know? And when I was moving out of my, my space, I was on the first floor, people up on the third floor of my building were being impacted. That's how bad it was. And so, um, you know, it's a reminder for folks just because you're, you know, you might be very far away from the water damage. If there's nice, solid communication there, you can definitely be impacted, you know? So it's literally contaminating the entire building. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. So if, if you're experiencing something like this, other than calling the insurance and then making sure your living environment, your working environment is okay, we're moving out of it. What are some other steps that you should take towards moving forward? Yeah. The flooding? I mean, drying as quickly as possible. Um, asking for help as quick as possible. Um, the insurance company drying things out, um, documenting, document, 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 take pictures, record video. Even if it's you describing a situation that's not immediately evident on a video, doing that gives you the documentation of you, the time, the day, the situation at hand, you know, so, um, yeah, I would say document as much as humanly possible. And even before things happen, don't be afraid once a month or something, or even once a year to go around your house and just take a five minute walking video, opening up cupboards, taking pictures of like bookshelves, you know, and just get document of like what's grossly there because you never know what, when you're gonna have to document when you're going to have to document things that you may have lost, you know, so document before you have to, you know. Wow. So our friend, um, Erin, um, at Fascia Fix Minnesota, um, she's sending a question. So she asked a few years ago, um, they have discovered a small patch of black mold in their basement. <laughs> and then her youngest son had been sleeping in a bedroom um, in the basement for about a year and a half. And her husband's office was also down uh, during that, during the COVID, down in the basement. So they haven't done any specific protocol to detox um, um, from like, or cleanse from that event. Um, she's asking, should they still do it? Um, and if you have any tips, um, they do have an infrared sauna at their house. Mm -hmm. Is there anything they can do? Do they still need to do it? Is there anything they can do? Yeah, I think there's a few questions. I think, um, you know, A, was the area that was moldy torn out? and addressed appropriately. So is there any continued contamination? Um, was the thing that caused the water issue from the first place addressed, was a leaking pipe addressed, was a leaking window addressed, was a sweating toilet tank addressed? Um, if not, there could still be a, you know, a hidden issue there. Um, and then the other question is what's happening with, with symptoms, you know? Um, a lot of people can be in mold and then they leave and they feel fine. A lot of people can recover naturally. And in fact, when um, people call to, to get set up with me as a client, I usually tell people, take care of your home first. Mm -hmm. And if you need me after that, I would love to see you. And if not, then, you know, you're good to go. It's horrible for business, but I'm not into, I'm not into misleading people and telling them like, oh my gosh, you got to you know, right now you're going to, you know, people need to work on putting out the biggest problem at hand, which is making sure that everything is okay now. And if there are no symptoms, then you, you might be okay. Um, you know, kids symptoms are going to look a lot different from adult symptoms. Um, kids tend to have more kind of, um, when kids feel crummy, they act out. That's the best way I can put it. So they might not be able to say, I feel headachey, I feel dizzy, I feel nauseous. A lot of their stuff is neurological and nausea and tummy stuff. But instead they're like pissed off or they're combative or they're moody or, you know, they're, they're having a, a flare in their ADHD. Could all be symptoms. For adults, it's a little bit more straightforward um, with being able to identify the symptoms. So it's, it's hard to say. 
you know, what's happening with symptoms. Are people feeling okay? If they're feeling okay, the mold's been removed and the leak's been corrected, you might be okay. That's the beautiful part about the human body is with the exception of uh, PAHs, um, you know, the forever chemicals, our body has a natural ability to clear this stuff out. Sometimes it needs more help, but there are plenty of people that come to me, like I said, that once they get out, they do really, really well. So hopefully um, it wouldn't be needed. The other thing I do want to mention is everyone, please be hyper cautious of your saunas. Saunas, um, you sweat in them. That's that's their nature. <laughs> and so um, we have seen some instances where saunas have been the source of mold for folks. Yep. Um, and additionally, um, people who have like mast cell activation issues or multiple chemical sensitivities. Um, I've seen some people become sensitized to like the cedar and the essential oil in mm. those like um, pine based, cedar based saunas. So that's just kind of a, just a little PSA on that front. Wow, great tips. Um, I know you also have a GoFundMe page oh. and uh, tell us about that and uh, how can people donate? Thank you, Jen. I really appreciate that. Um, so my GoFundMe, um, I can, I believe it's in my bio link. If people just head over to Life After Mold and they click there, it should be there. Um, and the GoFundMe is essentially getting, getting me back to a situation where, um, you know, I can, I can get back on my feet. It's hosted by a good friend of mine. And, um, I don't necessarily think I'm going to recoup everything that's been lost, but so far, um, all the help that people have provided has, um, been wonderful and I really appreciate it. And I appreciate anyone who's considering further helping out. Thank you. Do you have anything else that coming up that you'd like to share? Oh gosh. Do I have anything coming up? Um, not that I can think so much of this is say I have to tell you my kids finally got into daycare and uh pre-k today so this is the first day, day. that I'm not I, I know that I'm not juggling kids and the flood and trying to see clients virtually and you know so today's actually my first day of like <laughs> so, so when you ask it, is there anything to look forward to or things on the horizon right now? I say wholeheartedly and happily, no, no, no. <laughs> um, there, there is though, it's usually pre-recorded, but there is a, um, mycotoxin summit through doctor talks, um, that's going to be happening in October. And right now there is a, uh, menopause summit that's happening through them, um, and on that one, I talk about how mold and menopause can look really, really similar or mold illness, excuse me, and menopause can look similar. So um, those are two events that I'll be part of that people can go ahead and check out. And I'll always have them listed um, in my uh, bio link when they start to become active. And I usually post about them. So just keep an eye out. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us today and then sharing all these tips. Um, and I, I thank you everyone for joining and please check out Dr. Tessier's GoFundMe page and then support her work and also check out the Instagram page and with all these great tips. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Jenna. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you for your time. You too. Bye. Bye.